The Grand Duchy of Moscow, or Grand Principality of Moscow, was a late medieval Rus principality centered on Moscow and the predecessor state of the early modern Tsardom of Russia. The state originated with Daniel I, who inherited Moscow in 1283, eclipsing and eventually absorbing its parent duchy of Vladimir Suzdal by the 1320s. It later destroyed and annexed the Novgorod Republic in 1478 and the Grand Duchy of Tver in 1485. The Grand Duchy of Moscow expanded through conquest and annexation from just 20,000 square kilometers in 1300 to 430,000 in 1462. 2.8 million in 1533, and 5.4 million by 1584. Muscovy remained a tributary to the Golden Horde until 1480. Ivan III further consolidated the state during his 43-year reign, campaigning against his major remaining rival power, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, and by 1503 he had tripled the territory of Muscovy, adopting the title of Tsar and claiming the title of ruler of all Rus. By his marriage to the niece of the last Byzantine emperor, he established Muscovy as the successor state of the Roman Empire, the Third Rome. Ivan's successor Vasily III also enjoyed military success, gaining Smolensk from Lithuania in 1512, pushing Muscovy's borders to the Dniepr River. Vasily's son Ivan IV was an infant at his father's death in 1533. He was crowned in 1547, assuming the title of Tsar together with the proclamation of Tsardom of Russia. Name As with many medieval states, the country had no particular official name, but rather official titles of the ruler. The Duke of Moscow or the Sovereign of Moscow were common short titles. After the unification with the Duchy of Vladimir in the mid of the 14th century the Dukes of Moscow might call themselves also the Duke of Vladimir and Moscow, as Vladimir was much older than Moscow and was much prestigious in the hierarchy of possessions. Although the principal residence of the Dukes had been always in Moscow, in rivalry with other duchies Moscow Dukes also designated themselves as the Grand Dukes claiming a higher position in the hierarchy of Russian dukes. During the territorial growth and later acquisitions, the full title became rather lengthy. In routine documents and on seals, though, various short names were applied. The Duke of Moscow, the Sovereign of Moscow, the Grand Duke of All Rus, the Sovereign of All Rus or simply, the Grand Duke, or, the Great Sovereign. In spite of feudalism the collective name of the Eastern Slavic land, Rus, was not forgotten, though it then became rather cultural and geographical than political term, as there was no single political entity on the territory. Since the 14th century various Moscow dukes added, of all Rus, to their titles, after the title of Russian Metropolitans, the Metropolitan of All Rus. Dmitry Shmyarka was the first Moscow duke who minted coins with the title the Sovereign of All Rus. Although initially both Sovereign and All Rus were supposed to be rather honorific epithets, but since Ivan III it transformed into the political claim over the territory of all the former Kievan Rus. The goal that the Moscow duke partially achieved by the end of that century, uniting Eastern Rus. Such claims raised much opposition and hostility from its main rival, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, that controlled a large portion of the land of ancient Rus and hence denied any claims and even the self-name of the eastern neighbor. Under the Polish-Lithuanian influence the country began to be called Muscovy in Western Europe. The first appearances of the term were in an Italian document of 1500. Initially Moscovia was the Latinized name of the city of Moscow itself, not of the state, but later it acquired its wider meaning and had been used alongside of the older name, Russia. The term Muscovy persisted in the West until the beginning of the 18th century and is still used in historical contexts. Origin 
When the Mongols invaded the lands of Kiev in Rus, Moscow was an insignificant trading outpost in the Principality of Vladimir Suzdal. Although the Mongols burnt down Moscow in the winter of 1238 and pillaged it in 1293, the outpost's remote, forested location offered some security from Mongol attacks and occupation, and a number of rivers provided access to the Baltic and Black Seas and to the Caucasus region. More important to the development of the state of Moscow, however, was its rule by a series of princes who collaborated with the Mongols. The first ruler of the Principality of Moscow, Daniel I, was the youngest son of Alexander Nevsky of Vladimir Suzdal. He started to expand his principality by seizing Kolomna and securing the bequest of Pereslavl Zaleski to his family. Daniel's son Yuri controlled the entire basin of the Moskva River and expanded westward by conquering Mozhaisk. He then forged an alliance with the overlord of the Rus principalities, Uzbek Khan of the Golden Horde, and married the Khan's sister. He was allowed by the Khan to claim the title of Grand Duke of Vladimir Suzdal, a position which allowed him to interfere in the affairs of the Novgorod Republic to the northwest. Yuri's successor, Ivan I, managed to retain the title of Grand Duke by cooperating closely with the Mongols and collecting tribute and taxes from other Rus principalities on their behalf. This relationship enabled Ivan to gain regional ascendancy, particularly over Moscow's chief rival, the northern city of Tver, which rebelled against the Horde in 1327. The uprising was subdued by the joint forces of Mongols and Muscovites. Ivan was reputed to be the richest person in Rus, as his moniker, Kalita, testifies. He used his treasures to purchase land in other principalities and to finance construction of stone churches in the Kremlin. In 1327, the Orthodox Metropolitan Peter transferred his residence from Kiev to Vladimir and then to Moscow, further enhancing the prestige of the new principality. Dmitry Donskoy, Ivan's successors continued gathering the lands of Rus to increase the population and wealth under their rule. In the process their interests clashed with the expanding Grand Duchy of Lithuania, whose subjects were predominantly East Slavic and Orthodox. Grand Duke Algirdis of Lithuania allied himself by marriage with Tver and undertook three expeditions against Moscow but was unable to take it. The main bone of contention between Moscow and Vilnius was the large city of Smolensk. In the 1350s, the country and the royal family were hit by the Black Death. Dmitry Ivanovich was aged nine when his parents died and the title of Grand Duke slipped into the hands of his distant relative, Dmitry of Suzdal. Surrounded by Lithuanians and Muslim nomads, the ruler of Moscow cultivated an alliance with the Rus Orthodox Church which experienced a resurgence in influence due to the monastic reform of St. Sergius of Radonez. Educated by Metropolitan Alexis, Dmitry posed as a champion of orthodoxy and managed to unite the warring principalities of Rus in his struggle against the Horde. He challenged the Khan's authority and defeated his commander Mamatli in the epic Battle of Kulikufo. However, the victory did not bring any short-term benefits. Tokhtamish in 1382 sacked Moscow hoping to reassert his vested authority over his vassal, the Grand Prince, and his own Mongol hegemony, killing 24,000 people. Nevertheless, Dmitry became a national hero. The memory of Kulikufo Field made the Rus population start believing in their ability to end Tatar domination and become a free people. Dmitry successfully overcame the stigma of collaborating with the Tatars which had been attached to Moscow for decades. In 1389, he passed the throne to his son Vasily I without bothering to obtain the Khan's sanction. Vasily I and Vasily II Vasily I continued the policies of his father. After the Horde was attacked by Tamerlane, he desisted from paying tribute to the Khan, but was forced to pursue a more conciliatory policy after Radek's incursion on Moscow in 1408. 
Married to the only daughter of the Grand Duke Vitautas of Lithuania, he attempted to avoid open conflicts with his powerful father-in-law, even when the latter annexed Smolensk. The peaceful years of his long reign were marked by the continuing expansion to the east and to the north. Nizhny Novgorod was given by the Khan as a reward for Muscovite help against a rival, the reforms of Saint. Sergius triggered a cultural revival, exemplified by the icons and frescoes of the monk Andrei Rubolv. Hundreds of monasteries were founded by Saint Sergius's disciples in distant and inhospitable locations, including Beluzero and Solovki. Apart from their cultural function, these monasteries were major landowners. They could control the economy of an adjacent region. In fact they served as outposts of Moscow influence in the neighboring principalities and republics. Another factor responsible for the expansion of the Grand Duchy of Moscow was its favorable dynastic situation. When each sovereign was succeeded by his son, while rival principalities were plagued by dynastic strife and splintered into ever smaller polities. The only lateral branch of the House of Moscow, represented by Vladimir of Serpukhov and his descendants, was firmly anchored to the Moscow Duchy. The situation changed with the ascension of Vasily I's successor, Vasily II. Before long his uncle, Yuri of Zvonigorod, started to advance his claims to the throne and monomix cap. A bitter family conflict erupted and rocked the country during the whole reign. After Yuri's death in 1432, the claims were taken up by his sons, Vasily Kosoy and Dmitry Shmyarka, who pursued the Great Feudal War well into the 1450s. Although he was ousted from Moscow on several occasions, taken prisoner by Oleg Moksimat of Kazan, and blinded in 1446, Vasily II eventually managed to triumph over his enemies and pass the throne to his son. At his urging, a native bishop was elected as Metropolitan of Moscow, which was tantamount to declaration of independence of the Russian Orthodox Church from the Patriarch of Constantinople, Ivan III. Outward expansion of the Grand Duchy in the 14th and 15th centuries was accompanied by internal consolidation. By the 15th century, the rulers of Moscow considered the entire Rus territory their collective property. Various semi-independent princes of Rory Keedstock still claimed specific territories, but Ivan III forced the lesser princes to acknowledge the Grand Prince of Moscow and his descendants as unquestioned rulers with control over military, judicial, and foreign affairs. Moscow gained full sovereignty over a significant part of the ethnically Rus lands by 1480, when the Tatars' Golden Horde overlordship ended officially after the Great Standing on the Ugra River, and by the beginning of the 16th century virtually all those lands were united, including the Novgorod Republic and the Grand Duchy of Tver. Through inheritance, Ivan was able to control the important principality of Ryazan, and the princes of Rostov and Yaroslav subordinated themselves to him. The northwestern city of Pskov consisting of city and few lands surrounding it remained independent in this period, but Ivan's son, Vasily III, later conquered it. Having consolidated the core of Russia under his rule, Ivan III became the first Moscow ruler to adopt the titles of Tsar and ruler of all Rus. Ivan competed with his powerful northwestern rival Lithuania for control over some of the semi-independent former principalities of Kiev in Rus in the Upper Dnieper and Donitz river basins. Through the defections of some princes, border skirmishes, and a long, inconclusive war with Lithuania that ended only in 1503, Ivan III was able to push westward, and Moscow state tripled in size under his rule. The reign of the Tsars started officially with Ivan the Terrible, the first monarch to be crowned Tsar of Russia. But in practice it started with Ivan III, who completed the centralization of the state at the same time as Louis XI did the same in France. 
court. The court of the Moscow princes combined ceremonies and customs inherited from Kiev in Rus with those imported from the Byzantine Empire and Golden Horde. Some traditional Russian offices, like that of Tysiatsky and Vesh, were gradually abolished in order to consolidate power in the hands of the ruling prince. A new elaborate system of court precedents, or Mestny Chestvo, predicated the nobleman's rank and function on the rank and function of his ancestors and other members of his family. The highest echelon of hereditary nobles was composed of boyars. They fell into three categories. Ruriki princes of Upper Oka towns, Suzdal, Rostov, Yaroslavl, etc., that lived in Moscow after their hereditary principalities had been incorporated into Duchy of Moscow. Foreign princes from Lithuania and Golden Horde, claiming descent either from Grand Duke Gediminas or from Genghis Khan, ancient families of Moscow nobility that have been recorded in the service of Grand Dukes from the 14th century. Rurikid and Gediminid boyars, whose fathers and grandfathers were independent princelings, felt that they were kin to the Grand Prince and hence almost equal to him. During the times of dynastic troubles, boyardom constituted an internal force which was a permanent threat to the throne. An early form of the monarch's conflict with Boyarstvo was the Oprichnina policy of Ivan the Terrible. During such conflicts, Ivan, Boris Godunov, and some later monarchs felt the necessity to counterbalance the boyardom by creating a new kind of nobility, based on personal devotion to Tsar and merits earned by faithful service, rather than by heredity. Later these new nobles were called Voyans. The name comes from the Russian word dvor and the meaning of Tsar's dvor, i.e., the court. Hence the expression Porolovic Kovoru, i.e., to be called to the court. Assessment. The development of the modern-day Russian state is traced from Kiev in Rus through Vladimir Suzdal in Moscow Duchy to Tsardom of Russia, and then, the Russian Empire. The Moscow Duchy drew people and wealth to the northeastern part of Kiev in Rus, established trade links to the Baltic Sea, the White Sea, and the Caspian Sea into Siberia, and created a highly centralized and autocratic political system. The political traditions established in Muscovy, therefore, exerted a powerful influence on the future development of Russian society.